Hey, so OpenAI just released a brand new model, or really a condensed, refined version of GPT-5. It's a new coding model called GPT-5 Codex, and it really caught my attention after kicking the tires just for a little period of time. Boy, I'm really sold. This thing's kind of awesome. I want to dive straight in, take a brief look at what they announced, and then use it a little bit and show you exactly what it's like to use, and maybe some of the small differences that I've found so far. Something that OpenAI just released today is kind of a version of GPT-5 focused specifically for software engineering. So this is intended specifically for agentic programming, is the way they describe it. Codex just got faster, more reliable, and better at real-time collaboration, and really actual I have seen that. So here you'll see they're saying GPT-5 is a version of GPT-5 further optimized for agentic software engineering in Codex. All right, I usually will just push through these. You'll see that on Sweebench, it gets a better score than GPT-5 high. This is GPT-5 Codex high and GPT-5 high. So that's exciting that they improve the Sweebench uh, marks as well as the some code refactoring tasks. This is a benchmark that they have that it does better at. And that's actually a pretty useful perspective of can it refactor a large code base, which is usually something that's going to be done over a long run. It's kind of one of these things that you expect it will take many, many callbacks, running tests, verifying things. So that's kind of a neat one to see. And one of the things that's important here to call out, I loved this, Codex adapts how much time it spends thinking more dynamically based on the complexity of the task. And so this looks very much like uh, basically GPT-5 in ChatGPT, where you ask it a certain question, it comes back immediately, you ask a different question and it has to think about it. They're applying that down here inside of the coding model as well. So they're tuning how much kind of reasoning time they're applying to different problems. This is a really neat idea because sometimes I'll be in the middle model in medium and give it a problem that I think, Ugh, I wish I had selected before I kick this off, a high thinking model because I think what I'm asking it to do is much bigger. That's really exciting that they might actually be doing that kind of routing inside of the coding models as well. It says Codex will feel snappier on small, well-defined requests while you're chatting and work for longer, complex tasks like big refactors. During testing, we've seen Codex, uh, uh, GPT-5 Codex work independently for more than seven hours at a time on a large, complex task, iterating on its implementation, fixing test failures, and ultimately delivering a successful implementation. All right, but what does that really mean as far as something like token usage? They do kind of represent that. They've looked at all of the OpenAI employee traffic against the model, and they say the bottom 10% of users turns sorted by model generated tokens um, are 93% fewer tokens. So that basically means on tasks that were fast and easy to turn around and complete, they could do far less reasoning and be able to turn it out with far less essentially cost, far less tokens. And then on the top 10%, it, it spends almost twice as much. And they have a chart down here. So it's a much smaller ask down at the 10% and a much larger task up here at the 90%, basically a harder problem, more thinking. It knows how to apply more thinking, but where we spend a vast majority of our time asking for more succinct, smaller changes or just queries, those kinds of things, it's going to be doing much, much more efficient. As mentioned, they also call out that they are, they are, they have tuned this specifically for code reviews. And down here, you can see the number of incorrect comments that GPT-5 high had versus Codex high. So that's a great reduction. However, they're, of course, these are their own numbers, just bear in mind, but at the same time, we've all seen code review agents and they kind of are saying, you know, you could do this or you could do that, or this would be a good idea. And we're up looking at them thinking, well, I could do it a hundred different ways. I'm not sure that that's necessarily helpful. I think that's what they're hearing and trying to address with this model this way. Um, the high impact comments, so much more meaningful comments. And then how many comments per PR? This one's kind of exciting that it doesn't feel like it just has to comment every single time on every PR. That's kind of nice less wordy. Enough of that. Let's get into the terminal. Let's take a look at this thing running. If we run Codex in our terminal, you'll see it come up and awesome new animation announcing GPT-5 Codex, which is just great. So if you select GPT-5 Codex model, then it will start with that. But you can also just select model at any time and you'll see these new Codex models here up at the top. And I'm inside of an application that I can just ask it about. All right. And I will say that it comes up much faster. It does that 
that task much faster. This is one of the things that they are talking about. Let's say, tell me how it uses Firebase. Okay, and this is how it comes back. And I will say right away, this already feels quite different. The way that it communicates its information back to me is a very different experience than previous versions of GPT-5 or other models. You'll see that it has all of these links in the middle of the message coming back. What I would say from this is it's very um, conversational. This is coming back and giving me an actual readout. This feels much less like reams of information and more a succinct document that it's delivering to me. I have worked with it, like I said, for about an hour and I've gotten quite a few of these back and was very surprised to see it in the beginning. But in the end, the engineer in me really appreciates many of the things that they're mentioning. All right, let's try the same thing here with the, the old GPT-5 medium. I get its full definition of thinking, multiple thinking blocks, um, what it's searching for, kind of all of its pattern of execution. That absolutely was not seen with the new Codex model. Okay, and remember when I told you that uh, the other one didn't return reams of information? Here, we'll scroll back through what this one had to say to us just from that one request. This is everything. This is an enormous request or response to my simple request of how it uses Firebase. Now, admittedly, it does go through a lot of really great details. GPT-5 has been a great editing model with code, but it returns it much more in kind of this blog post format that makes it feel like it's trying to tell me, uh, create a report for me and tell me a whole story instead of the first one, which felt much more like a succinct engineering path. Here you go. Here are the real important aspects you need. I would imagine I could ask to get to every gory detail if I needed to. So I would greatly prefer the new Codex model that way. All right, but how is it to use, right? That's actually kind of the important part. I'm going to share my application, my numbers application that uh, that I've shared multiple times on this channel. And I'm going to show that when I run this application of a recent change, we're seeing missing, missing Firestore index information. So this is, we're using Firestore as the database. Firestore is a cloud database solution from Google. And usually you would like the cloud to do some of the lifting if possible, like filtering or sorting, those kinds of things where possible before it comes down to the client not have every client deal with all of the data. This is, we're missing that. We are we don't have some solution on the cloud to be able to filter the data the way we need. So here you go. You're going to have to do it client side. That's what this is saying. Obviously, we don't want that. I want to try to see if I can bring Codex CLI or really Codex, essentially the Codex model to solving this problem. This is the cursor editor. You could probably use Visual Studio Code just as well. It's basically the same thing that we're solving here. I'll show you two ways to pull this up the way that I use it typically is I might go into terminal mode and just pull up the terminal panel at the bottom here, bring it up there. There is another way that we can go through the AI pane over here. I have added Codex as a plugin. You can come out here and get the uh, extension of Codex bring it into the application and you'll be able to use a panel like this or something similar to this. And this is them saying, do you want to use the Codex 5 model? Great. Now we're into using the Codex models. You can see them down here just like we did in the previous. So we'll leave this one on medium as well. But first I want to show you in terminal mode because that's just where we just were. And I, maybe you can make the same sense of it here. So I'll load Codex down here, open up this panel a little bit bigger and also hide the side panel. So now it feels more like where we were. We'll make sure what model we're looking at at this point is the GPT-5 Codex uh, medium model. Great. So that's what we're looking at at this point. And what I want to do is give it the error message that I was just previously seeing. So we can say this is missing. All right. Missing Firestore index limited video query. The problem that we know. So I'm asking it with no other context. Can you go fix this problem for me? OK. And, and what we're seeing here is now it's going through the thinking part that we didn't see last time. Right. So this is a more complex problem that I'm giving it a random, can you go find this problem and fix it? It's now looking through saying, okay, this is part of the video system. You can see that it's doing references to all the different items and how they're supposed to be used in the system. So this, I think, is that example of it's trying to apply more thinking where more thinking is needed. Pretty cool to see, frankly. Okay, excellent. And so here is the final result. It added a composite index definition. It went into the system and added this definition file of a new index that needs to be pushed up to Firestore itself. And this is a little trick with using Firebase. I can either go log into the console 
control in, in the Firestore environment itself, or I can push it through a command line system that they offer, the tooling that they have at the command line, and that would be the Firebase action that's being referenced here. The reason I point out that interesting detail is it's telling me in what I would consider a very succinct definition, this has been a problem that I've had with GPT-5 as a coding model for a while, is trying to figure out what it thinks I need to do next and having to read an enormous document to figure out, what do you want me to do? <laughs> I You did all this work, you got it to some point. Have you tested everything? Have you not? So this so far has been my experience that I get a much more succinct response at the end of it. Mileage may vary, it's very early, so this may not hold, but right now I've been very geeked about this. This is one of those things that made me really happy that it can do a bunch of work and then come back and say, here's your next step. Run Firebase Firestore indexes against your Firebase project and that will, that will install the index. What I'd like to do is say, can you do that? And I will tell you, Claude Code is the only editor that I've had, only CLI editor that I've seen yet that could do this. So this will be exciting if it will open up a shell and kind of run this command on our behalf. Let's find out. Yes, definitely. So it's definitely kicking it off, trying to run it. Uh, we'll see if it's successful. I won't ding it for that. Excellent. Excellent. So it ran it and it's saying, yep, okay, I deployed the index. That looks pretty good. It went back and forth and fixed something that it didn't quite get right the first time around. All of this, I didn't have to touch anything. So that that really is a success, but there's only one way to really tell if they got it right. Let's take a look. Nope. <laughs> but all right, let's kill the server and start it again, maybe? Nope. Even on restart, doesn't quite work. Let's try one more thing. I'll give it back to it and say, didn't quite work. Try again. And I'll report their success or failure. <laughs> Stupid human. <laughs> okay, so all right, all credit to uh, all hail GPT-5 codec. So all right, what did it tell me at the end of the last message that we were sitting here? I know y'all are probably yelling this at the screen. It says, okay, step one, wait a few minutes, then rerun this to see how it worked. Uh, and of course, I reran it. It all works perfectly fine. Not a surprise. Excellent. So it took care of it. Last one, let's take a look at what it's doing if it's updating a visual project, just in case that's changed. Okay, if I'm honest, I really am not. I'm not going to judge anybody by this. This is a project that I wrote, oh, well over a year ago at this point. So this would have been with um, maybe early cursor or mid-level mid cursor kind of stuff. It has no agentic coding against it other than cursor and hand-built stuff. But let's take a look in here. Let's say we search for a game, Silk Song. This is just a sample application that I built playing with some ideas. If I search for Silk Song, which I do believe to be a very recent game that's very popular. The problem is that there are filters defined here, notability and main game. So if we say it can be any game and we don't want a category that has to be assigned to it, then it shows up. What I want to do is just light this button up with a color when there's filters applied so that it might hint to you that the reason you're not seeing something is there's a filter. This is a terrible example. There's a very old application, but let's take a look and give it to uh, GPT-5 Codex and see if it can just push right through. Here we are in cursor. This time we're going to use the side panel and we're going to use the Codex side panel as we saw earlier. And we will use Codex GPT, uh, uh, GPT-5 Codex Medium and run it here locally. Great. So what we're going to say to this is I'm going to give it a screenshot. Okay. And I'm going to tell it when there are filters applied that aren't just default, like when there is a main game filter or any other filter that's applied, I kind of want to see this button in our main accent color. So I want the button to basically light up so that I can tell that filters are applied. If there's no filters applied, I'd like to see it like you see it now, which appears to me to be normal. Let's see how that goes. Okay, there it goes. It did all of its work. Filter buttons now light up whenever the filters deviate from the defaults. And I will say it definitely works that way. So if we take Silk Song, come back over here, and the default is set up this way. It was just my definition. The default is set up to have main game. What I need to go in is tell it main game is not a default object. But when I go away from whatever the default is the button lights up as expected and goes away if you go back to the default. This is fine. Like I said, old project, different definition, really worked quite well to puzzle through what was going on inside of the application. It did take quite a while to figure all of this out, but it did excellently well. So I will say my experience with this thing has been great. Okay, so this was just a quick first look at Codex, what is it? GPT-5 uh, Codex as a model that just released I really think it does exactly what we want, gets us to a smaller, more efficient model for the vast majority of the types of changes that we're asking for, and then can think very deeply when it needs to. To me, that's great. I'm going to probably be on Medium a lot more frequently. Very often, I kind of wander into high more often than I want to because 
I'm asking more sophisticated questions every now and then, and other times I'm absolutely not. So this to me is a really neat idea. I'll see how the router works. I want to hear what your experience has been as well or will be when you start using this. Let me know. Add some comments. Let the others know what's going on down there. Thanks for coming along for the ride on this one, and I'll see you in the next one.